It seems to. Great. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Dima Krekov, I I'm uh, happy to see you. But uh, I guess uh, you, you know all this, so um, maybe you'll just um, waste your time. Uh, and, um, and why didn't you go to uh, Scholz's lecture yesterday and last Friday? I, I think that I uh, uh, didn't have, like, uh, I was late for it. Oh for some reasons mm -hmm. and there are some uh, problems mm -hmm. with internet connection here but now it's okay i see mm -hmm. i watch okay, it but it's recorded so you can the recording yes mm -hmm. okay uh okay so, so let, let's start mm -hmm. uh this will be a course in uh invariant theory and um it's uh an uh, area of li linear algebra um, but uh, some blend of uh, linear algebra and algebraic geometry. Uh, so, so from some um, advanced point of view, uh, it's uh, about taking quotients in algebraic geometry. So, so you, you know how to take a quotient of a set model or some equivalence relation or the group action. Uh, and then in um, algebraic, in, in topology course, you learn how to uh, do this with topological spaces, mm, uh, and um, uh, in this course we will learn how to do this um, with algebraic varieties. Uh, and um, mm, uh, well, in a sense, I, I will say n nothing more uh, at least today. Uh, so if you somehow understand this, uh, th then you may leave right away. Um, but um, also, let, let me formulate um, uh, in a very down-to-earth um, way um, our, our goals. Uh, so, in the invariant theory is, is about um, some classification problems in uh, linear algebra. Uh, for, for example, um, uh, say the, 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 the first, the most basic problem is about uh, classification. of um, linear map uh, A uh, from one vector space to another vector space. Uh, okay. Um, and uh, here is the standard method uh, that is always used. So first we uh, somehow rigidify our problem. Uh, so we choose basis uh, in V and W. Uh, then A uh, is um, represented by a matrix. Uh, say if dimension of V is uh, K and dimension of W is uh, N. Mm, then this is K by N matrix. A. Um, and uh, uh, the uh, ch change uh, change of basis uh, it is uh, the group GL V times GL W acts uh, on the set of all matrices A uh, by G uh, H of A is uh, H A G inverse. Mm, and we are interested in the orbit of this action. Okay, so so let me repeat once again. Um, we had some linear algebra, algebra problem. Uh, th then mm, we uh, introduced some uh, rigidity here. We, we chose a uh, basis in our vector spaces V and W. Uh, th 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 then we uh, uh, get the another linear space of matrices, K by N matrices. Uh, and um, the 
um, base changes in V and W um, amount to uh, the action of two uh, general linear groups on our space of matrices. And uh, now the original problem is about uh, classification of orbits of GLV times GLW on this space of matrices. Mm, and uh, the answer is very well known. Uh, so the orbits are cross classified uh, by the ranks uh, of these matrices. So there are altogether a uh, minimum of uh, K and N plus one orbits. Uh, okay, so when the rank A is zero, so on, and then minimum of K and N. Okay, uh, so th this was the, the simplest uh, sample problem wh where they, uh, it was possible to obtain a very explicit answer. Mm. Okay, uh, now um, the next, uh, maybe it was problem number one. Uh, the next problem is about classification of, line of linear endomorphisms. Uh, of some space V. Uh, and maybe fr from now on, um, uh, we assume that our base field is just complex numbers. Okay. Uh, so, um, that it is well known that uh, this classification um, is uh, by Jordan normal forms. Uh, so again, we have the space of n by n matrices. Okay. Uh, well, may, maybe up, up to permutation of various blocks, uh, and uh, well, the, the, the action here is just by, by conjugation. Uh, so G of A is a G A G inverse. Mm, okay. Uh, now maybe uh, the third example. Uh, is uh, about classification of uh, bilinear forms. Um, uh, say symmetric uh, or skew symmetric. Uh, and um, these are uh, orbits of um, uh, GLV in the uh, second symmetric square of V star. Uh, and uh, here we have the second exterior square. Okay, uh, and the, uh, the the action is uh, mm, uh, again say say B B will be the matrix of our form uh, G of B is uh, G uh, uh, transposed B G. Okay. Mm, and uh, uh, then it is known that uh, the symmetric, well, in fact, uh, both symmetric and skew symmetric forms are again classified just by their ranks. Mm. Uh, 
so th these ranks are arbitrary uh, for symmetric forms. Uh, Uh, and even for uh, skew symmetry. Okay. Mm. Now, uh, uh, well, you, you can also uh, classify uh, not the dual tensors, but uh, the, the symmetric square of V itself or uh, exterior square of V itself, and it will be the same classification. Okay. Uh, now, um, uh, so, so far, uh, all our pr problems were uh, taking quotients modulo GLV, uh, the, the full general linear group. But uh, in fact, you, you may consider quotients modulo some other groups. Uh, Uh, so what, what we will encounter in this course uh, will have some finite groups. Um, uh, so SLV, uh, unimodular group. Uh, so these are vo volume preserving transformations. Um, or uh, say OV uh, transformations preserving um, uh, a non degenerate uh, symmetric form. Uh, or say SOV, this is the intersection of OV and SLV. Uh, so they're pres preserving both um, the uh, symmetric form and the volume form. Uh, and uh, finally, SPV, uh, these are preserving oops, um, and on the generate uh, skew symmetric form. Okay. Um, say, for example, um, mm, we can consider V uh, modulo uh, O of V. Uh, so the ve vectors modulo orthogonal uh, transformations uh, and then it is mm, also an easy problem uh, namely uh, this quotient is just uh, the field of complex numbers, uh, namely vector goes to its length. Or maybe length squared. Okay. Mm, and uh, if we uh, take the quotient modulo uh, 
symplectic group uh, in, in case our form is uh, skew symmetric mm, then v modular spv mm, consists of just uh, zero and uh, and everything else all the other vectors are equivalent well mm, everything else In particular, the length uh, of any vector is certainly zero because it's Q-symmetric form. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, maybe just uh, about explicit form of this. Um, uh, if um, um, our symmetric form uh, is uh, in, in some basis uh, the sum of squares, um, and then its, its matrix uh, is uh, just identity matrix. Uh, okay, uh, and the the orthogonal group O of V um, is uh, the group formed by all matrices so it's a, uh, it's a subgroup of uh, GLV uh, and it is formed by all matrices A such that um, A inverse is uh, A transposed okay uh, well and certainly uh, the SLV is formed by all the matrices such that the determinant of A is 1. Okay, uh, and uh, the symplectic group, um, uh, well, to write it down explicitly, uh, I choose a basis. Mm. Uh, such that uh, the matrix of B uh, is, um, well, it, it's uh, not symmetric, it's skew symmetric, uh, so something like this identity, negative identity, uh, mm, zero, zero, like this. Uh, and well, so, so let me identify uh, my, my form B with such a matrix. And then uh, the symplectic group of um, transformations preserving uh, this particular form uh, is the set of matrices A, such that A inverse uh, is mm, B transposed uh, mm, A transposed B. Okay. Um, mm, okay. And, and, and now it turns out that uh, somehow we almost uh, listed all the uh, situations w w where the classification uh, is possible. Uh, uh, so, uh, apart from Uh, the above examples. Um, a complete classification uh, is possible um, for 
are the actions uh, of, uh, say, orthogonal group uh, on the um, uh, exterior square of V uh, or on the symmetric square of V. Um, uh, the, the same for the uh, symplectic group action. Uh, okay, say so also uh, SLV action on the uh, symmetric cube of V, uh, but only when uh, dimension of V is three, uh, or maybe less than or equal to three. Um, and uh, also SLV action on the uh, exterior uh, power of V, if this power is small enough, uh, more precisely the dimension of V plus this degree uh, must be at most 12. Okay, uh, and somehow all these uh, examples uh, correspond uh, to um, semi-simple Lie algebras um, with automorphisms um, uh, so-called theta groups. Uh, They were introduced by Vin, classified by Winberg. Uh, in fact, in fact, Winberg was um, one of the um, founders of the um, well, well, founding fathers of invariant theory, um, and uh, uh, we will we'll study some of his works uh, in this class, but maybe towards the spring or somewhere. Uh, okay, uh, so mm, uh, unfortunately, apart from these examples, the complete uh, classification uh, in general is impossible. Uh, so, so to say, counter example. Um, when a complete classification is impossible. Mm, so the, the most well-known example is um, uh, the action of uh, GLV uh, on the um, and the morphisms of V uh, that are classified by Jordan normal forms. But, but now we have not one as uh, endomorphism, but uh, a few endomorphisms. So K is at least two. Uh, and even if K is just two, then, then this is, this is uh, the uh, basic example of wild problem of linear algebra. So in a sense, any problem of linear algebra is uh, mm, is not harder than classification of uh, just two endomorphisms up to simultaneous conjugation. Um, or else, uh, another wild problem is when uh, GLV acts on um, the symmetric uh, k kth power of V. Uh, and k is bigger than two, uh, well, and dimension is bigger than three. Um, okay, uh, so um, 
so since we see that uh, the complete classification is uh, usually impossible, uh, we have to um, um, uh, somehow b b bargain for this. Uh, so we have to um, def define w w what we mean by classification if, if it's not complete. Uh, so how to weaken uh, our um, requirement. for classification. Of orbit. Um, uh, okay, I, I will uh, say this uh, in a moment, but before I uh, forget, uh, I, I guess every, everybody is uh, here. Uh, so please um, s s send me an, um, a message to my uh, email okay and then i will um form a list of uh, uh the students and i i will um uh, for example s s send you home assignments and also about about home assignments uh mm, so, so there is some official uh, syllabus of this course uh and uh mm, it is mm, some made according to s s some um strict requirements in particular according to these requirements uh I, I we must have a final exam but in reality uh, there would be no final exam so so in this course syllabus uh, it is said that your final grade will be composed of 30 percent of final exam and 70 percent of home assignments but in reality there will be no um, final exam and the final grade will be determined absolutely just by your home assignment Okay, uh, and in order to uh, get a good grade, you have to submit your home assignments. Uh, and the first assignment is right to me, uh, and th th then I will send you the second home assignment. Okay, so mm, I hope everybody will s send me an e email so, so that I will know your email address. Fine, M maybe I will even write, write it down. So please. Send me a message with your email address. In order to receive home assignment. Okay, um, so n now we're going to weaken our uh, classification requirements. Um, so, um, uh, for this, we will consider uh, the action of our group G. Um, on uh, uh, the vector space of functions uh, from our uh, vector space uh, to the complex numbers. Like this. Uh, and in fact, um, though we always considered um, some ve vector spaces, uh, it's not necessary. We can consider arbitrary set or space, variety, whatever. Something like this, um, na namely uh, g of f of x uh, is uh, certainly f of g inverse of x. Mm -hmm. This is mm, the basic formula, uh, and uh, mm, then we can uh, consider the invariant functions. Uh, 
namely special functions f that uh, f of g of x is uh, equal to f of x for any g and any x. Uh, okay. Mm, now uh, there is the following stupid lemma. Um, that um, the two points uh, lie in the same orbit, mm, g x1 equals g x2, if and only if um, f of x1 equals f of x2 uh, for any invariant function. Okay, uh, and the, the proof is absolutely clear. Um, we just uh, consider the um, characteristic function of, of an orbit. Uh, so we define f of x um, is equals one if x lies uh, in the orbit of certain point y and zero otherwise. Uh, and uh, then f of x mm, mm, one is f of x two uh, well equals one if x1 and x2 lie in this orbit gy uh, and uh, f of x1 equals f of x2 equals zero if uh, they are both not in this orbit. Uh, okay, mm, so, so mm, this way we, we, um, uh, we find uh, an, an equivalent the description of uh, uh, of uh, the orbits, and I, I see that uh, that Vani Karpov uh, sent me his email address in the chat. But 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 no, please send me uh, your email address to my to my email. Uh, maybe let me uh, write my email just in case. My email is. So please send me uh, an email to this address. Uh, otherwise, I, I will not know your email address and I will, will not send you home assignment. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so, so so far, um, we did nothing at all. Uh, yeah, we just re reformulated the, the question of, of uh, classification of orbits. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but now, uh, Know that um, in, in, in all our problems, uh, x was actually a vector space. Mm. And because of this, uh, inside all uh, the, the space of all functions, uh, we had a subspace of um, polynomial functions. Okay, and, and now we can, uh, test uh, our orbits by in invariant polynomial functions. Okay. 
Okay, so this is some change of paradigm. Uh, this is the, the, the key uh, idea um, for, for the uh, in, in invariant theory. Uh, so we have uh, an equivalence relation uh, x1 is equivalent to x2, mm, say, over g. If uh, gx1 equals gx2, they lie in the same orbit. And this is, we know, uh, equivalent to the fact that uh, f of x1 equals f of x2 for any invariant function. Okay. Um, and uh, then a priori, uh, there is a weaker condition. Uh, mm, say, um, uh, x1, uh, in, in the sense of invariant theory, is equivalent to x2 uh, if uh, uh, f of x1 equals f of x2 uh, for any um, so, sorry, here is an invariant function. Uh, and uh, now for any invariant polynomial function. Okay. Uh, so th th there is a mm, there is an application like this, but uh, not necessarily in the opposite direction. Uh, so let's consider an example. Uh, say our G is GLV uh, and um, uh, our X is a uh, space of endomorphisms of V, just the matrices. Uh, and then it is known that mm, the invariant polynomial function on the endomorphisms uh, of V Uh, are generated by uh, traces. Trace uh, of a matrix A, trace of its squared, uh, and so on. And finally, trace of its uh, nth power, where n is dimension of B. Okay. Uh, and the uh, from this, it follows um, that uh, two, two matrices, uh, A and B, um, are equivalent in this sense of invariant theory uh, if uh, they have the same eigenvalues. With multiplicities. Uh, so, in other words, uh, the, sa uh, the same uh, characteristic polynomial. Okay. Uh, so, this is strictly. Weaker um, than to have uh, sorry, the same Jordan normal form. Okay. Um, so, in, in fact, we'll prove. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, the following theorem or claim uh, that um, uh, the two notions of uh, equivalence uh, are the same. Uh, if and only if uh, the group G is finite. 
So we have seen that uh, the two motions differ uh, in case G as GLV, uh, and uh, in fact, for all other al algebraic in infinite groups, uh, they will also differ only for finite groups. These are uh, the same relation, equivalence relation. Uh, okay, mm, so now the question of mm, classification of orbits is replaced uh, 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 oh, fi finding the quotient. Or maybe V uh, over G mm, with um, uh, the question of uh, computing the ring of invariant functions. Uh, and uh, the, the first uh, observation, uh, very useful observation uh, about this, um, is th this is a, a graded ring. Uh, okay, mm, and um, mm, some of the, the, the classical uh, invariant theory. Mm, Uh, of the 19th century um, and uh, it, it was um, somehow a her heroic period of invariant theory um, that features many uh, great names uh, Sylvester Kelly uh, Hermit Uh, maybe not her. Um, maybe Klein even, and so on. Uh, just was occupied uh, with um, uh, just computing this. Okay, namely just generators and relations. Um, and why is it useful? So if uh, say F1 and so on, Fn are uh, some generators, Uh, then we know that uh, x1 is uh, equivalent to x2 in the sense of invariant theory. Um, if and only if uh, f1 of x1 equals uh, f1 of x2 and so on. And finally fn of x1 equals fn of x2. Uh, so um, well, there are finally checks to make. Yeah, for, for, for example, uh, on the previous page, yeah, uh, in order to check that two, two, two matrices are um, uh, invariant theory equivalent, uh, it was sufficient to, to compare the trace of their powers, uh, their traces, trace their squares, and so on, traces of their nth powers. 
there are n many checks. Uh, okay, uh, but uh, in general, uh, it is not clear um, if uh, there are finitely many. generators uh, and and thus the problem of uh, explicitly uh, describing this invariant theory equivalence relation uh, in, in, in well, theoretically maybe um, hopeless too uh, just like the problem of um, complete classification okay but now um, the, the point is that uh, for, for for many groups G, uh, th 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 there are finitely many generators. Okay, so um, mm, now the, 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 the very famous result due to Hilbert, uh, David Hilbert, uh, published. Uh, two papers in 1890 and 1893 um, that uh, well had enormous impact uh, on the invariant theory Uh, but unfortunately, this uh, enormous impact was not very positive. Uh, namely, uh, Hilbert managed to just to kill the invariant theory. Uh, uh, mm. uh, but then, f fortunately, uh, uh, it um, was revived 70 years later. uh by another david mumford um uh, so, so we'll, we'll cover this story in more detail uh during our course um, but in, in this first uh paper um uh, hilbert proved that uh if g is a so-called reductive group Uh, again, I, I will explain what it means uh, later on, but uh, let me just say that any finite group is reductive. And uh, all our examples are also reductive. So GLV, uh, SLV, um, OV, SOV, SPV, and so on. Uh, there are some exceptional groups, maybe you heard of. Mm, okay, uh, and uh, now V is an algebraic representation. Of G, then um, uh, the ring of invariant functions is finitely generated. Okay, um, some, somehow um, uh, Hilbert did, did not. Um, what happened before Hilbert? Uh, with all those great names, uh, th th they found um, some explicit generators uh, with explicit and easy uh, re relations. Uh, but instead of this, Hilbert just pr pr proved this uh, abstract existence theory or whatever. Uh, 
the, 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 there is some finite generating subset, uh, and it, it was there was nothing um, he could say explicitly about this. Uh, but somehow at, at, at the time, um, this was this result was considered um, the, uh, the the utmost. So that there, 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 could, there could be said nothing better. Uh, and so the invariant theory died at, at, at this point. Uh, but, but then um, in the middle of uh, 20th century, people understood that there is more, more to say about it. Uh, OK. Mm, and um, uh, this other paper um, was um, about um, the so-called so null cone. Uh, Um, namely, of the set uh, of vectors uh, th that are invariant theory equivalent to point zero. Uh, okay, and uh, somehow th um, this is uh, the set of all x such that uh, the orbit closure contains point zero. Uh, and the orbit closure uh, here is um, in any sense. Uh, uh, is taken, say, in the risk topology. or equivalently in the classical topology. Uh, but this is not uh, the content of uh, Hilbert theorem. The Hilbert, theor uh, Hilbert theorem is uh, the following criteria. Uh, um, but if uh, X uh, is equivalent to zero, lies in this null cone, then uh, there is a one parametric uh, multiplicative subgroup. Uh, C cross in G, such that uh, already uh, its orbit closure uh, contains zero. Okay, so now know that the whole big group G uh, acts on X and um, takes it cl cl uh, close to, to zero, but, but just one small one parametric subgroup already does this job. Okay. Uh, okay. And um, say so as as a as an explicit corollary, uh, Hilbert proved at the time um, that for the action of uh, say SL two uh, on the case symmetric power of uh, two um, so just on, on um, uh, homogeneous degree k polynomials of two variables Okay, so then uh, a polynomial P uh, lies in the null cone, 
if and only if um, uh, it has a, a linear factor of multiplicity. Uh, bigger than k over two. Uh, okay. Mm. So, so the, the, this was the mm, contribution of Hilbert, uh, and in, in, in fact, uh, mm, he did mm, essentially not, nothing else uh, in invariant theory, j just two very famous papers. Uh, uh, okay, and and then um, mm, in uh, in seventy years, uh, well, seventy years later, came Mumford. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, somehow he applied. Uh, Um, the invariant theory to algebraic geometry. Uh, and namely to, um, to uh, classification problems in algebraic geometry. Um, namely, uh, classific classification of, um, uh, say, projective algebraic varieties. Um, okay, um, so um, how, how does it work? Uh, we fix some discrete invariant, uh, like dimension or degree, or say genus, if you heard about curves. Mm, and so on, um, and and then uh, we try try to uh, construct the uh, universal family of such varieties with with, with these given discrete invariants. Mm. So say curves uh, of genus G. And well, there, there is some moduli space, whatever it means, mg, uh, of curves. Mm, okay, uh, or mm, else may, may, maybe well, let's consider embedded varieties, uh, mm, say, mm, projective hypersurfaces. Uh, X in P mm, and uh, of degree D. Okay. Um, and then uh, such a hypersurface is cut out by just one polynomial uh, equation of degree D, mm, and it's homogeneous uh, in n plus one variable. E in uh, n plus one variable uh, homogeneous of degree D. Uh, that is, uh, P lies in the deep symmetric power of C 
and plus one. Mm, and uh, uh, somehow we, we did the, the same trick as in the very beginning of today's class, right? We, we rigidified the problem. Uh, so, so we ch chose a basis uh, in this n plus one dimensional uh, space, and then we were able to r r write down our um, function as, as a polynomial in, in, in these n plus one variables. But now we, we um, uh, can take another basis. Uh, so, so, so we are interested in classification of these polynomials up to change of ba basis. Uh, so these hypersurfaces. Mm, are the same as uh, the quotient. Modulo reaction of GL n plus one. Uh, okay. Mm, and um, also, uh, maybe uh, we have to um, quotient out by the scalars, right? Because um, when we multiply our polynomial by a scalar, uh, then uh, the, the hypersurface uh, cut out by this polynomial uh, remains the same. Uh, but uh, these scalars uh, are included into GLM plus one. It's just the action of the center of GM plus one. Okay. Um, so um, we're just in, in this uh, classification problem. Uh, and uh, we can, we know that this is a wild problem if D and N are big enough. Um, so we, we would like to replace it by the invariant theory problem, but unfortunately, just for this reason, because uh, the scalar multiplications are in here, there are no, no invariant functions whatsoever. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, No invariant functions. Ls. Uh, so so we, we can uh, to try to separate our problem in, in, two, in two parts. So first we consider uh, 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 the quotient modular uh, unimodular matrices that have no scalars in, in them, well, apart from roots of unity. Uh, okay. Mm, and then mm, uh, mod out by the scalars. Uh, okay, uh, so so um, it means that uh, first we take um, well uh, the algebraic variety maybe a fine algebraic variety. Uh, just the spectrum of invariant functions. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, I shouldn't write it this way. Uh, so let's say that V 
uh, is um, 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 C n plus one uh, and um, say W is uh, the symmetric dth power of V. Uh, and now we take uh, the invariant functions uh, on W uh, with respect to SLV. Okay. Uh, and say this is our algebra A. Uh, and um, uh, we usually consider the algebraic variety the spectrum of A. But now, since we're interested in uh, its quotient modular, the scalar's action, uh, we, we should, uh, in fact, take its projective spectrum. Okay. Mm. So this is uh, like A uh, without zero modular the scalar action uh okay uh and and th th this will be uh the answer to our problem so this is uh the invariant theory uh answer to um the classification of a uh, DOED uh, hyperception. In yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and um, because of this uh, projective uh, quotient, it is called a geometric invariant theory quotient. GIT quotient. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, th 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 there are certain drawbacks of this. Mm. Uh, so this GIT quotient, uh, as you see, this is the quotient of uh, uh, spectrum of a without zero right uh but but this this zero corresponds to the whole null code yeah uh we, we so we lose uh the whole uh null code in um in w right this polynomials of DVD in V. Uh, so somewhat ge geometrically, um, the corresponding hypersurfaces, oops, uh, are very degenerate. Uh, like uh, in this example of, of Hilbert, yeah, in corollary I quoted before, uh, when you had polynomial in two variables uh, with with one linear factor of degree uh, uh, more than half of the total degree, right? Uh, so th this means that this high hypersurface will ha have um, uh, uh, nil, nil potents in its structure sheaf or, or, or somehow many nil potents. So maybe we don't want to consider that. Okay. Uh, 
so but there is also another drawback uh that some hypersurfaces uh are not really uh, equivalent. Uh, see, P1 is not really GL uh, the uh, equivalent to P2, but uh, they are represented uh, by the same point uh, in the geometric invariant theory quotient. Uh, and still, uh, uh, um, this can only happen uh, in some, in a sense, degenerate cases. So if we have uh, uh, good, good polynomials representing, say, sm smooth uh, hypersurfaces, then th this d does not happen. If they are geometric invariant theory equivalent, th then they are really equivalent. Uh, so, so this solution to our modular problem is not not an ideal solution, but uh, is somehow cl close to ideal solution. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, then maybe just one last word that um, say if we want to classify uh, the curves of genus G. Uh, say so if G is one, uh, th th then it, mm, it is just an, an, uh, a particular case of the previous problem uh, that any elliptic curve uh, is a hypersurface uh, of degree three in P2. Uh, but then uh, it does not work anymore like this. Uh, so the problem becomes harder. Uh, you, you need uh, more than one equation to cut out your curve in projective space. Uh, and somehow this was the achievement of Mumford. He, he realized how to do this. So you use the canonical embedding or, or pluricanonical embedding. Uh, okay, and I hope we will uh, maybe also uh, cover uh, this or at least part of, of this Mumford approach. Uh, okay, so I think that this is all for today please don't don't forget to send me an email uh, the sooner the better mm, and uh, and i hope to uh, see you uh, day after tomorrow on thursday mm, so, so the, 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 then we'll start proving theorems uh, there will be no, no, no overview anymore but instead i will pr pr prove everything i claim uh, okay, so thank you, and s s see you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you.